So welcome back to the channel where today I'm going to compare a couple of the 18 terabyte high-end hard drives from Seagate. If there's one thing that's obvious from my other content is that Seagate have their fans and they have their detractors. I often get a lot of comments when I cover them complaining about failures on Seagate drives and another data does imply that Seagate do have a little higher failure rates than Western Digital and even Toshiba based on large public data sets like that from Backblaze. None of them have particularly outstanding failure rates and drives from any of these manufacturers can and do fail. And it looks like though the failure rates do vary a bit between manufacturers, it's really the model numbers that have the most variance with specific models from each doing better or worse than others. You also have to remember that Seagate has a larger deploy base. They have the largest market share. So you're gonna hear more bad stories as people tend to share bad stories more often than they share the good ones. But nonetheless, I'm always happy to hear people's comments, experiences, um, in the comments below and as always with any storage and this includes SSDs also make sure you have backups of anything that really matters to you. Now if you prefer Western Digital this is totally fine with me and I'm actually a big fan of the WD Ultrastars especially personally and I covered and compared the 18 terabyte Ultrastar and the Red Pro in a recent video I'll link that below you can check that out if you prefer WD. Today's video will compare the 18 terabyte Seagate Exos drive against its Iron Wolf Pro sibling because Depending on which one is cheaper at the time, these could both be great choices for NAS and home server storage. And sometimes the enterprise drives are actually cheaper to buy. I will also be doing a video on the 18 terabyte Toshiba MG Enterprise series, actually in the N300 NAS drive in the new year. And then taking a look at how the WD Seagate and Toshiba drives compare against each other. So please do consider a subscribe if you want to see any of that. We'll also have a look at how pricing compares between these and the WD drives. But this varies a lot, so I've included links below. You can go and check out pricing as there are often good deals to be had on specific drives from time to time. Now, I picked the 18 terabyte drives to look at as I have quite a few of these and they sit at a pretty good price point per terabyte typically. But other capacities are coming in my content. I just released a video actually covering the eight terabyte enterprise drives for those who don't have such large needs or deep pockets. So let's get to it. Okay, let's start off talking about pricing and availability and what I have here are two heat maps that show the price and availability at the start of December 2025 for a variety of resellers in the US and the UK. Now coverage in Amazon EU wasn't so good so I've not included it but if anyone can shout out actually where they prefer the best places to buy hard disks in the EU please let me know I can take a look at these in future videos and, and pass comment on those and that'd be great thank you. Now we can see here that availability for the Exos, the Armwolf Pro, the Ultrastar and the WD Red Pro in each place with the colours in the upper left being green where the Seagates were cheaper and green in the lower half here where Western Digital has the best prices. Now Seagate as you can see here are broadly cheaper with a few exceptions um, and WD picked up some green where the Seagate just wasn't available at the time I looked. To make things easier and to get a meaningful comparison, here's a chart of the percentage price of the Seagate versus the WD, where both are available. Now, the number shown is the price of the Seagate compared to the WD drive, with the color gradient being from red, where the Seagate was 30% more expensive, to deep green, where it's 30% cheaper. And where the prices are even, it's going to be colored yellow. Now the Seagate comes in cheaper in most offerings as of the making of this video with the average price 7.5% cheaper than the Western Digital compared equivalent between the 14 and 24 terabyte range. With the Enterprise drives coming in slightly more than that at 8.4% cheaper and the NAS a little bit less at 6.3% cheaper. Prices though they do vary so always check the prices but this gives you some ideas of where to look. The next heat map shows how price compares in each capacity across all drive types and retailers in each region. So for example, the iMorf Pro from Newegg is the cheapest way to get 18 terabytes capacity in the US, with the Exos from Amazon.com pretty close behind it. Now the Exos from Amazon UK is the cheapest way to get 24 terabytes capacity in the UK. Pricing on NAS drives seems to be a bit more consistent. Also, there seems to be a little bit better availability and consistency in the pricing. Overall, at the time of creation of this video, Newegg seems the cheapest way to get the capacity in the US and the Iron Wolf and Amazon for the Exos drives for the UK is between Amazon and Scan with Amazon a little better where there is availability. So summary of this is that price between the Exos and the Iron Wolf Pro does depend on the retailer but they're typically around 8% cheaper than the WD offerings right now. So I'm also going to post affiliate links to Amazon for the drives I look at today 
You can go and check out the current pricing. I do tend to pick up a lot of drives from Amazon because pricing is generally good, but just make sure you pick up new drives if this is what you're after, as there's a lot of refurbished drives on Amazon and on Newegg actually. Um, I do not like the way the sellers intermingle them with the new, and I find Newegg the worst actually for the buying experience generally, for drives at least. It isn't transparent really who you're buying from and if the drive is new or not, you really have to like take care. I actually don't have a problem by the way with refurb drives if you know that that is what you're buying and that you trust the seller to provide the warranty they claim to. In fact, it can actually be a great way to pick up cheaper storage for lab equipment, for NAS devices, and I have a video on that below, which I'll link, uh, where I test a bunch of Amazon renewed drives. Okay, so we're gonna get to performance of these drives. Both the Exos and the Ironwolf Pro have some different model numbers. So for clarity, the testing here is on the Exos X18 18 terabyte drive, and that's model number ST18000NM00J, and the Ironwolf Pro, which has the model number ST18000NE000. Both drives are helium filled. They use CMR for the recording technology and they have nine platters and 18 heads. They rotate at 7200 RPM and they both come with 256 megabytes of cache. Both also come with five years of warranty. Also with the Ironwolf claiming a max sustained throughput of 260 megabytes per second where the Exos claims 270. Now we're gonna test this, but the more important numbers are the real world throughput numbers with different data profiles. So the following five tests will be run each a minimum of 10 times for consistency. So first of all, a large file write test, sequentially writing 10 gigabyte files until the disk is 99% full, and then checking the performance across the entire drive, but also measuring average speeds. Then a large file read test. And here we look at the performance curve, the average read speed, and we also look at the max sustained read speed to see how it compares with the data sheet. Then we do a mixed file write test, and this is where five and a half thousand files totaling 10 gigabytes are written again, to 99% drive capacity. And again, we look at the curve and the averages. And then we do a retest for these mixed files. And then finally, we overwrite 20% of the files across the disk in an operation that's very file metadata intensive and produces non sequential rewrites. So let's get started with that large file test. And here, performance is close with the Ironwolf Pro starting out strong at 270 megabytes per second, sustained a little faster than the Exos until around three terabytes, with the Exos then edging the Iron Wolf out for the remainder of the test. Time to complete is very close, with 23 hours and 46 minutes for the Exos, for an average of 208.3 megabytes per second, and then the Iron Wolf Pro is just behind at 23 hours and 48 minutes, giving it an average of 208 megabytes per second exactly. The large retest again is similar, with the Iron Wolf Pro stronger initially for around 25%, and then close performance until 75%, and then where the Exos closes a little stronger. Time to complete here, also close. With the Exos again, a little on top, finishing in 22 hours and 51 minutes for 216.6 megabytes per second average, and the Ironwolf Pro six minutes behind at 22 hours and 57 minutes for 215.6, so it's one megabytes per second less, so it's pretty marginal. Large read tests are where drives tend to perform the best also, so if we look at the max speeds, we see 274.8 for the Exos, around five megabytes per second higher than the data sheet, where the Ironwolf coming in faster due to that good start at 279.4 megabytes per second, nearly 20 megabytes per second higher than claimed on the Ironwolf data sheet. Next, we get to the mixed write test, and the Ironwolf starts to shine here with a clear advantage. NAS drives often seem to be tuned for greater mixed file write performance, likely with the way the cache is configured. And here, the Ironwolf Pro starts out 225 megabytes per second. It's around 10 megabytes per second more than the Exos. And it maintains this advantage really over the entire test. This results in the Ironwolf producing 184.6 megabytes per second on average and completing the test in 26 hours and 49 minutes, where the Exos produces 175.1 megabytes per second and takes nearly an hour and a half longer to finish in 20 hours and 16 minutes. The mixed retest is very close, and though the Iron Wolf again seems to perform better initially, the Exos is more consistent for the rest of the test, with both starting out above 250 megabytes per second, finishing at around 125. Now, the curve here is the performance you can expect once the drive is nearing its capacity, and these curves are expected with the performance on the outer edge of the disk, often twice that that you get on the inner track. 
Completion time again is very close with the Exos winning out at 24 hours and 12 minutes at 204.5 average Mbps and the Ironwolf Pro at 24 hours and 15 minutes, 204.1. And finally, we look at the rewrite performance, which is the most relevant if files are regularly being modified or replaced on a drive. And here the Ironwolf Pro again is significantly faster than the Exos, starting out at 175 megabytes per second to the Exos is 150. And then again, it's retaining that advantage over the entire test where the Ironwolf Pro finishes around 100 megabytes per second to 95 on the Exos. Completion time for this test was 7 hours 37 on the Exos for a 129.8 megabytes per second average compared to the Iron Wolf at an average of 146.9 megabytes per second, finishing 53 minutes quicker in 6 hours and 44. A look at the blended test results show that despite some wins for the Exos on the large file and the read performance test, the mixed write performance gives the overall win to the Iron Wolf Pro with an average of 198.8 megabytes per second to the Exos's 194.8. Let's take a look now at the power and acoustics. And if you use these drives in a NAS that's either in your living or workspace, then sound especially could be of interest. And there's regularly commentary on which of these drives is quieter or louder. So starting with the power usage, there is not a lot in it here, with the Ironwall Pro having a higher baseline power usage, but broadly very similar power consumption to the Exos besides this. It does appear to be a lower power usage in the mix rewrite test despite performing significantly better. It's possible that this isn't so much a failing of the Exos but that it's maybe more thorough in its data validation but there's no really way to be clear on this. But what the acoustics do show is that the Exos is a little noisier on all file operations with the large file operations the most obvious so if noise worries you the Ironwall Pro could be a better fit for you here and I do see online commentary that people think the Exos is a bit noisier. Now this wraps up the testing and it demystifies what the differences between these two drives really are, other than just the sticker itself. So let me summarize my conclusions here based on all of this and my suggestions on what drives you should consider. But before that, please do like the video if it was interesting or helpful and, and share comments you have on your experience. This is a huge help in hinting the YouTube algorithm to share this content, which I hope you find is good quality. And if you did like this, I have a growing list of other videos comparing hard disks, SSD, NAS and DAS systems and other computing and storage topics. Please do consider a sub, click the bell icon, etc. if you want to get this in your feed. Links to all the drives are below and coverage coming on the Toshiba options and a Bake Off with a WD versus Seagate versus Tosh 18 terabyte drives. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. OK, so what do I suggest here? Well, for a long time, Enterprise drives seem to be better value, but right now the prices are close between Enterprise and NAS drives, and Seagate again seems really competitive on price. Reliability is a little better on the WD drives more generally, but it varies by model number, and failure rates are still good from both of these. Both of these drives today come with five year warranty, so with that, of course, never neglecting your backups, this I think shouldn't be the main consideration. I would favor the Ironwolf Pro if all is equal. Performance is a little better, and they're also a little quieter, but not by much. But for me, it really comes down to the price and what I can get at the time at the best price. The performance difference is not sufficient to move the needle away from the price as a key factor. Now, the Ironwolf Pro is also more readily available at retailers, where the Exos, being an enterprise drive, is more likely to come from more specialist sellers, which often means marketplace buyers on Amazon and Newegg. If you do buy from one of these buyers, check that they're a certified seller so you can get the warranty coverage you expect. Now drives can fail and they're more likely to fail sooner the after arrival than later due to the risks of damage somewhere in the logistics chain. So I always recommend doing a full service scan of disk before you put them into service. Much easier to replace a DOA drive than after six months under distance selling rules. So find those bad disks as early as you can and before they're in your RAID array storing data. And Thank you for watching to the end. I love the support you give me on my small corner of the internet. And as always, like, sub, comment, and I will see you in the next.